Hello everyone and welcome back. So what do we have here? Well, we have a solid 0.75 inch diameter shaft. That's right. Oop. That's right here, here, and here. And it's subjected to all these torques shown. Now the bearings allow the shaft to turn freely. What we want to do is I want you to plot a torque diagram, which is going to show the internal torque in segments one, two, and three. And as always, consider counterclockwise to be positive. Then I want you to determine the maximum of shear stress magnitude in the shaft. Well, you kind of, this is fairly similar to previous examples we've done, just with a bit more work when it comes to figuring out what the torque is on the um, internal sections. But what I want you to do right now is I want you to try this problem on your own. See if you can solve it. And if you can't, Come back and get some help. If you can, come back and check yourself. Remember, this is a group problem, so grab a rubber duck, grab your traveling gnome, grab a brother, grab a friend, whatever, and try it out together. So three, two, one, and we're off. Now, the first thing I want you to notice here is it says that these bearings at the end allow the shaft to turn freely. Um, and the reason we were knowing that is because if you look at it, it's in equilibrium. It's got as much torque turning it one way as it does the other way. Okay, now we need to calculate the torque felt by each shaft section. So let's try drawing some free body diagrams. In my first section, I only see that 10 pound foot torque. And I've got T1, I'm pointing it away. I'm pointing away would make it counterclockwise, which would be positive. What we see is that it's actually gonna be a clockwise moment on the internal torque. So it'll be negative 10 pound foot. In section two, right here, well, we have our section one. This is point A right there. And then you know, there's a 10 pound foot coming from this one and 50 pound foot coming from this one. And you're like, what about T1? It doesn't count because it's now an internal torque. So it doesn't matter when we do our equations. We're trying to calculate T2. Well, we sum it all up there and we get that it's gonna be 40 pound foot. All these are just vectors. For moments, they have a vector that passes along the axis they are wrapping around. And finally, section three, we cut it. And what do we get? Well, there's 30 pound foot pointing to the left. And our torque three, we point it away, but it's actually going to be clockwise because it's going the opposite direction than it's supposed to be. And it's negative 30 pound foot, negative 30 pound foot. Now, knowing that, we can draw our torque diagram. So it's down to negative 10, we go over, up to 40, go over, we drop down to 30, and then we come back up. And so we see these, we see jumps of 10, 50, 70, and 30. If you look at the magnitudes of the torques that are applying to our little device. So rather than solve all these equations, you could just Start at one side, know that it's zero, and then add the torques as you go along, and you can get this diagram. Now, having known that, you need to calculate the section properties. Luckily, it's constant, and so the pole moment inertia will be the same for all of them. And it's going to be pi over 32 times the diameter to the fourth. And we get that 0 0.03106 again because we have a diameter of 0.75 inches again. And then from that, we can finally calculate the shear stress magnitudes. Now, it's pretty simple that we can realize that one, all of them have the same radius. They have the same pull moment inertia. So the one with the maximum shear stress is going to be the one that has the maximum torque. And we see that section two will therefore have the highest shear stress. The highest shear stress. So thank you for listening. I hope this helps you. Remember, this equation is good as long as we are in that elastic region. If we go outside of that, then this breaks down because it's based on Hooke's law. Well, I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all later. Bye.